Hey, my name's Austin and I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered whether that daily cup of coffee is good for your metabolic health? Eh, maybe not. But if you rely on coffee on a daily basis, then here's a video that you can send to all your friends who talk down on you for your daily caffeine habit. Now, before we dive into the science behind this miraculous bean, let's first acknowledge that caffeine is a stimulant and due to our genetics, individual responses may vary from person to person. That being said, you'll be hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't turn into a better person shortly after having that cup of coffee. In fact, you can feel caffeine's effects in as short as 15 minutes. Interestingly enough, if we look at coffee with and without caffeine, it sets us up to better understand the differences between its short-term and long-term effects. Decades-long studies have consistently found that drinking coffee lowers your risk for developing type 2 diabetes. On the other hand, you may have read some headlines or experienced for yourself that drinking coffee elevates your blood sugar. How can both be true at the same time? Well, let's figure this out by talking about the short-term effects first. Now, I'm hoping I wasn't the only one to assume this, but I thought that because caffeine didn't have any carbohydrates that it didn't raise blood sugar levels. Fact is, we wouldn't be completely wrong to assume that. To test coffee's effect on glucose, researchers asked participants to drink a cup of coffee with a meal and then monitor blood sugar levels. This is where it gets interesting. What they found is that glucose and insulin tend to rise, which suggests that caffeine causes a decrease in insulin sensitivity. So does caffeine cause glucose to rise? Not really, but drinking it can cause your glucose to rise more than normal if you're eating it with a meal. That wasn't so bad, huh? It actually gets better. Now that we've got coffee's short-term negative effects out of the way, I bet you'd love to know that it's been confirmed in multiple reviews that coffee actually reduces your risk for developing type 2 diabetes, which includes those who prefer the decaffeinated version of this magical drink. The fact that decaffeinated coffee provides similar benefits suggests that there's something other than caffeine that's driving its protective effects. The most likely candidate here is something called chlorogenic acids. While caffeine may decrease insulin sensitivity in the short term, the multiple actions of chlorogenic acid reduce the total impact of glucose and provide long-term benefits like protection against chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. Okay, so wait, if you're not on the caffeine train, don't use these benefits as an excuse to join the movement. There's actually a way to experience these benefits without needing a cup of coffee to be a more likable person in the morning. You can get these same beneficial chlorogenic acids through several fruits and vegetables like artichokes, apples, carrots, and tomatoes. If drinking coffee is more of a habitual thing and less of a dependency, you might be interested in switching to green tea, which has been shown to have similar long-term benefits. Whew. Okay, I know you might have been nervous when you decided to watch this video, but it's official. Your caffeine habit is safe. That being said, since we know that caffeine temporarily decreases insulin sensitivity, it will be best not to pair your cup of coffee with a high carb meal. That way you can enjoy all the benefits of your cup of joe while continuing to improve your metabolic health. Thanks for watching.